Hi again. Welcome to the garage. I'm Pierre. Uh, before going to the main subject today, I would like to open a little parenthesis. Um, Keith's still looking for uh, worthy nominees for the uh, What's in Your Box contest. But they don't have that many, but uh, a couple of good ones so far. Just, uh, you know, don't be shy. Just uh, try to uh, build up your courage and present yourself. Uh, I'm not too far from Montreal, Canada. And uh, if someone needs help around here, just to build up a video, build up your courage and just contact me. And uh, maybe we can, uh, we can uh, do something. And uh, I'm ready to... Uh, you know, freely help you. I mean, it's no, there's no charge at this. It's going to be my, uh, you know, my contribution to uh, to the giveaway. Uh, contact me. The uh, email is in the uh, description box down there. And uh, this has been said. We uh, this year we uh, want to improve the normal looks of uh, machinist hammers. Straight handle, maybe sometime a taper in it. More, uh, more or less successful neural on it, and uh, you know. Not so comfortable, not exactly uh, easy to index or anything like that. So we decided to make, uh, in counterpart, we decided to make a more challenging uh, part. But uh, I think a uh, few advantages to this. Uh, if you want to grab, good grab, it's, uh, you know, oval shape, easy to index. You know, you know where, in what direction your hand is holding the tool. It's uh, tapered with a uh, few, uh, few shapes on it to make it comfortable for the hand. Finishing around there, finishing uh, oval there. Uh, that was kind of a challenge. Uh, Philip, uh, Robert and I discussed a few ways to do it on the uh, normal late, which is not exactly a way a late will work. So we had to uh, maybe uh, work out a little fixture on this. Uh, Robert had the last word on it and uh, he came out with something uh, very simple, very efficient did the job for, uh, I'd say, more than cheap. And uh, that's what we're going to see today. Uh, he's installed in a new house, so don't look at the uh, little bit disorganized basement because he's working on that uh, besides uh, helping us with the, uh, the project. Uh, we'll be seeing how it's been done and uh, hope you get something out of this. So uh, let's go uh, see how we prepared it to the late here and finally to Robert's basement. Okay, that's something we uh, we don't do every day, but it's fun. We're uh, turning a hammer handle. Okay, four jaw chuck, and it's uh, oval. So the uh, narrow side and the other narrow side. We're within three thousands. Do to the, the three thousands. I guess that's uh, not satisfied. Let's uh, that'd be better. Okay, the high sides. There you go. Let's make a zero there. Oh, yeah. Hey Kate, that's for you, a bomb too. Took us uh, a little bit more than two minutes though. But not too bad for an uh, eccentric handle. There we go, we're turning uh, about uh, 60,000 RPMs divided by I don't know what to give a result of 375. <laughs> or oh, maybe 225. Okay, let's make a nice hole in there. Center drilling. That's it. Let's go with this. Okay, drilling wood on a metal lathe. Uh, it's late night here. R Robert is going to pull out the uh, spider we made for the, uh, you know, going right to the uh, hammer handle. 
Let's go. Yeah, it's special. <laughs> Teflon tape, uh, bushings and tape. <laughs> but it works good. You know, the handle's got a hole right through. Concentric. Nicely done. That's going to be our model. Now we'll do it with sound. It's only Garek. Robert's in charge of the handle, so uh, he's got pretty good ideas so far. It's working good. No, it's working good, be honest. Here we see Robert preparing the, uh, the wood. It's raw wood. Yep. That's oak, this one, I guess. Looks like oak. No, it isn't. No, which one is it? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> An unknown. Yep. Hold on, a bit of noise coming. into my machine, line it up with the other one that's there that's the master. All I'm doing is, I've got two little points that uh, keep the blank in place to keep it from uh, losing its index. So I seat it in place by forcing it on. There we go, that should be in its place. Now I'm going to set up the end. When I finish turning, it's actually rather small, so I thin down an end of one of the nuts. That just gives me a place to run into uh, at the end of the process. So basically we have a masterpiece which is used to trace all the other ones off of. I'll just show you how the machine turns. I've got two things going on. As my master turns, this will follow the profile, copy it with the router, and at the same time I have an advance which the lathe controls also. So I've got both motions controlled by my lathe. Um, master and slave turn at the same time. I'm making a copy of the other. This is just giving you an idea. The unit's moving just enough to get the job done. I'll turn on my dust extraction, kind of noisy. After that I'll turn on the router and I'll get the machine going. The first pass is a rough pass which is done quicker than obviously the finishing pass. So I'll get things going and you can see what's going on.
This is why Robert doesn't have a YouTube channel. Lighting's not good here. <laughs> Full of reflections. <laughs> He's one step away from my channel. <laughs>